Hello everyone, in this lesson we're going to be talking about deflections and decoys. So if you don't know the difference between the two, if you cannot find this tactic in front of you, then stay put because we have a lot to learn. So deflection and decoys are actually tactics that a lot of people get confused many times. And to be honest, you don't have to really know the name as long as you know how to use them and you're familiarized with the pattern. But if you're a chess player, you should really know the difference. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain the difference, I'm going to give you a few examples for both, and at the end you're going to see how I practice myself, you're going to see me doing a few tactics on my own. Take a look at this position, see if you can figure it out, I'm going to go over it at the end, I'm going to rewind and start with some basic exercises first. Here we are, this is a very good example to show you what a deflection is. So basically a deflection is a distraction. So there's a piece or a square that you're attacking, but you cannot do anything since there is a defender already. So you have to find a way to distract or deflect away that defender and then you can accomplish your objective. Like in this case, I realize my queen and my bishop are trying to do checkmate on g7, but the queen is defending. So immediately I'm thinking, oh, if I could deflect that queen, if I could distract it or, or make it go away, then I see this move, rook takes bishop. So once I take, not only did I get a free bishop, I'm pinning the queen, so I'm going to get a lot of material, and if the queen takes me, well, then I do the checkmate. So this is pretty much what a deflection is. So I'm going to give you a couple more examples. In this case, you can see how the black king is exposed. We also have a pivot pawn that is ideal for my queen to come in with check and then go down to h7 checkmate. The only problem is that the black queen is actually controlling h4. So again, I'm thinking, what if I could deflect the queen? So I need to distract the queen and I'm going to do it one more time by sacrificing my rook. So rook c8 and it works perfectly because this queen has no good squares to stay on this diagonal. So my knight is controlling this too and my queen is of course controlling these two. So either they lose the queen or they accept the sacrifice and then I go check, they have to move and checkmate. Alright, so we're going to wrap up deflections with this exercise. Here we're actually losing when it comes to material because we don't have a queen, but the black king is in a very difficult position. So we actually have checkmate in two moves, but it involves a deflection. Let's see if we can figure it out. I hope that you have been pausing the video every time I set up a new position because it's ideal that you actually try to do it yourself and then you listen to the answer. Here uh, the first moves that come to mind are rook h4 and rook f4 but both of them are going to be captured by this pawn on g5 so if I could deflect that pawn maybe I could do the checkmate. So the move is actually rook f4 check the only reply they have is taking the rook so I deflected the pawn and now this rook could come in with a nice checkmate. That's deflection, again, we're just trying to distract the piece, just make it disappear. Now let's talk about decoys. Okay, so this is a very basic uh, decoy exercise. So a decoy is actually going to be when you lure one of your opponent's pieces into a poison square. So there's a square where they don't want to go and you're going to find a way to force them into that square, that way they get in trouble. It's like you're setting up a trap and when you when they get there, they're going to get in trouble. So here, just to show you, is a white pieces to move and they realize that if they go queen c4 right now, it is check, but it's not checkmate. The king can actually go away. So they're going to force the king to go into a different square and then we're going to get him in trouble. The move is actually b5. This king would never go to b5 by, by himself because we're going to put him in checkmate, but now we're forcing him to get there. So we lured the king onto b5 and now checkmate on c4. So this is what a decoy is. Now we're going to take it to the next level. It's a white piece to move and the only hint I'm going to give you, and if you don't want me to spoil it for you, just pause the video and try to solve it right now. But the hint is that we're going to try to trap the black queen. Right now, um, the answer is actually to do bishop to g4. So by doing this, I'm attacking the queen. The queen has nowhere to go to be safe. And if they take, that's exactly what I want. I want the queen to go onto g4 because that's exactly where the knight could fork it along with the king. So bishop g4, the queen has nowhere to go. They have to take, and now that's a perfect fork. I can move, I get the queen, and now I'm in a better position. Finally, we're back to this exercise we started with. If you 
found it already congrats it's a very tough one so again i'm going to give you more or less the main idea so in this one first of all we have to be aware that this pawn is about to promote the key is to decoy the queen and the king onto a specific square that way we can under promote to a knight and fork them so it all starts with rook takes on e7 the queen has to take then queen goes to a7 notice that the queen is already decoyed onto the square that we want it to be now we're going for the king the king is forced to take and now this is exactly what we need them in order to under promote to a knight and fork them that was a very nice tactic uh, it's hard to see both decoys and then the under promotion to a knight but this is how complex uh, this theme could get. Now what I'm going to do guys, I'm going to try to do a few tactics myself. These are tactics I've never seen before. And you're going to see more or less how I think, how I approach the exercises um, as I go. It's very interesting that when I come here to do the tactics, um, I see that they actually have a category that is actually decoy and deflection. So I don't have to choose multiple themes. So I'm going to choose that one. I'm going to do between, uh, I'm going to put 1000 and... 2000 so keep it simple uh, and then I'm going to hit start so it's the white pieces to move and is this decoy or deflection hmm oh I think I think I know what it is hmm, this is actually well I think well I guess you could call this a decoy but actually it's more like interference but anyways let's start with this one uh, I think the answer is and again, guys, pause the video if you want to do it on your own, because I'm going to go really quick over these ones, If, of course, if I find them quickly. I think the answer here is, this is a simple end game, so it's just getting one of the pawns to the end and promote. If I just send this pawn up, uh, you're going to, you should know by now the rule of the square. So the king is going to get in the square, and he's going to get my pawn. So what I do is, I'm going to do d5, luring this pawn onto d5, because that's going to create an interference. So when that happens, I'm going to push my pawn and this king will not be able to get to my pawn because I created like a blockade here. I'm not sure if this is a interfe uh, interference or um, decoy or both, but anyways, I think that's what, what the answer is. Maybe I'm wrong, but I think that's what it is. So you see, now I push and they, they're telling me I got it right. So I'm going to hit next. And now I'm the white pieces again. Let's see what this is. Um, well... I think well okay now I, th I see what it is so I want I, I could take this this queen but my pawn is pinned so if I could make this rook go away from this file then I could get the, the queen so I'm going to, I think the move is rook e8 and when the rook takes then I'm able to get the queen so I made it go away and now I take so perfect now let's go to the next one this is black pieces to move and Hmm, I think I found it. So here, look at this. The move is actually rook g5, so this is a fork, and the queen is actually forced to take me, or I take her, and that's a very nice decoy. So I'm decoying the queen onto g5, and now that's going to allow me to do a discovered attack on the queen. So rook g5, check, f3, and then I get the quid. So anyways, I hope this lesson helped you uh, understand what the decoy and the deflections are. Now it's up to you to practice more if you have a tactics book at home, or you could actually come here and practice more. Remember, it's going to take you a lot of tactics and exercises like this to actually get the hang of it. So you better get started now. With that said, I'll see you next class. Keep practicing and I'll talk to you soon.